Hey there, welcome to today's video. So real quick, here's what's going on. I'm in the middle of filming Ultimate Gorilla Whooping Stealth using a monocle setup video, but a few days ago I woke up super fucking sick. Like halfway through this video, I woke up sick. I got the COVID. So I'm not able to go out in public and finish this video. I don't want to go to Target and infect everybody. So what I did instead was I finally watched this movie I've been meaning to watch forever. The Rotor DR1 movie, Chad Capper of Flight Test, David Winninstall. They made Rotor DR1. So today's video is going to be Bach Grinder Explains Rotor DR1. While sick with COVID and die on dabs. Enjoy. Stone Cap. Stone Cap Entertainment. Good one. Good one. So this one is by Chad Capper, founder of Rotorite. Christian Capper, that's his kid there. Christian Capper, he's the uh, main guy. I don't know who Natalie Welch is. I, I bless her heart, though. So the little premise they give you in the beginning is that some kind of virus has taken over the world. Everybody's fucking dead. People have ravaged society. There's not that many people left. All the dead people are buried. There's no zombies, though. But even though society broke down drones that have been a big part of it, they had delivery drones and autonomous delivery drones, those are still going on schedule and dropping off supplies, even though there's nobody really there to get them. Wait a second, you have a bunch of abandoned cars, you blocked the streets, you got a fucking horse, look at all these cars. How, what kind of budget, hang on, what kind of budget does this video have? Holy shit, 300,000, you convinced $300,000 worth of people to give you money to make a fucking movie. That's insane, man. You gotta admire their work ethic. So now we find out our main protagonist's name is Kitsch, and it looks like he's got a little friend that has a horse. And he kind of just goes around doing doing cool drone shit in a post-apocalyptic wasteland. Not a bad premise for a film. We see him with his little homemade contraptions doing some drone hunting, trying to harvest some kind of parts from them. I'm guessing it's the battery. He probably wants to get them for the batteries, because what else? You can get parts off all kinds of shit, but batteries, I imagine, are rare to get in a post-apocalyptic type deal. Where are you going to fucking plug in your IDST? No, oh, we fucking nailed that one. We got that piece of shit drone. I hope he doesn't stomp on it. Oh, what the fuck, man? Oh, they use anal beads for power. They use singular anal beads for power instead of batteries, apparently. So it looks like Kitsch, yeah, Kitsch goes around collecting these little anal bead pellets, which are what? You use them for power or something? You strip the drone of them. Poor little, poor little drones. And then you, um, you use them to power stuff or something? Oh, that drone's pissed. He knows you killed his fucking homie, bro. He ends up actually living in a pretty sick little bachelor pad. It's underground, hidden from the drones. He's got a Super Nintendo little popcorn machine in there, and he just chills and gets high on drugs and fucking jiggles around underground. Not a bad, not a bad setup for the apocalypse. After we get a view of Kitch's sweet underground base, the story takes him to what I'm guessing is supposed to be La Drib, post-apocalyptic style, living out of his van, preying on children. I'm not sure what they're trying to say La Drib is doing here, but it's it's kind of creepy. He's like doing some weird sexual endoendos. For him to get his T Rebel 9 camera back? I don't know. What if I find this ball, huh? This next scene, I'm really not too sure what to think about. It did not need to be included. It starts off, and there's all these cool pinball machines. You're like, oh, cool, they got more cool stuff. But then this dude fucking this lady in the back closet. There is no need. There is no need to include this fucking scene in this movie. I feel like whoever was directing this just wanted to fucking. But after that gross fest, we have this scene here where you have your typical Ohio man doing a deal for the anal beads. Creepy Ladrib comes in and he's trying to sell him the anal beads for more than he's trying to give Kitsch. Kind of fucked up Ladrib, but I guess it's true to character. And then there's this line. We don't hit kids. And I'm like, did you not see the previous scene, bro? Because what the fuck? So Kitch barely escapes the grasp of Drew the Predator, and he goes to look through his old camera and sees pictures of the past. You know, he sees his dad during Christmas, remembers how times used to be, and he still has that fucking drone coming after him. This thing is going to laser beam him in the face if he's not careful. How do you live in a world full of drones, and you're unaware of a drone following you around scene to scene, Kitch? Huh? What's up, Kitch? Psych, motherfucker, he knew it was there and he took that shit out. Just as Kitsch goes to stomp the shit out of it and take the anal bead from its body. <laughs> Just as Kitsch goes to curb stomp the stupid drone and retrieve the anal bead to sell it for more digital cameras or whatever, the drone starts flapping around like it's sentient and it actually doesn't want to die. 
Kitch then does what any good FPV pilot does, and he puts the drone right up to his fucking face while it's still plugged in to inspect it. So Kitch is back with this homegirl, and they're putting the drone back together. I think a much better scene, instead of them building a drone together, would be Kitch and his homegirl going back and fucking murdering the guy that assaulted her in the closet, but we find out that her name is Naya, and she hates being called Red. I thought they were friends beforehand, but I guess they're just friends now. Maybe they're gonna go ahead and address that in Grievance uh, a little later in the film. Naya ends up stealing the watch from Kitch, taking it to typical Ohio man instead of the drones. So apparently drones are the highest valuable commodity in this post-apocalyptic hellscape. It seems kind of fun except for the assault. So apparently the drones contain arc pellets, which I missed. They, that's what I kept calling the anal beads. They're arc pellets. And that's what he also powered his super sweet underground bachelor pad with. Oh, this is the move, like in the movie title, the DR1, they found it. This is a DR1. This is a, this is Wally, basically. This is the Wally drone. While going through his Rebel T9, Kitch finds out that that DR1 drone he just found was actually one that his father had been working on before the virus hit. Right after that, we go to another weird child abuse scene where these guys walk around fucking people up. I don't know. Yeah, apocalypse sucks, but you don't gotta put weird shit like this in there all the time. Walking by, Kitch sees the poor little kid getting robbed by the scumbags and doesn't do a fucking thing because fuck him. So far, I don't know if I feel any sympathy for this character. I don't know if I'm supposed to, but I don't like him. He does have a pretty sweet house, so I'd probably be cool with him just so I could hang out and play his fucking Super Nintendo and do his drugs and shake around on the bed like a wingnut. Kitch comes home and Naya has fucking torched the bachelor pad and stolen his dad's drone. We are now setting up. We are now setting up for conflict in this movie. Some shit's about to go down. I'm excited. Kitch and Naya go back to some other little warehouse thing and there's actually this pretty funny joke about how DR1 is actually not Dr. One. I mean, at least I saved Dr. One. What? It's DR1. They have a little heart to heart on the roof and Kitch explains to Naya that he's been trying to find his father and he didn't really have any hope until he found the drone and that's going to be his new mission in life is trying to find his father because finding that drone means that he's out there somewhere in this wasteland. Naya offers to go and Kitch is cool with it even though she just firebombed his bachelor pad and tried to steal his drone. I guess it's hard to make friends, you know, when you're living at the end of time. So any any help you can get probably helps. She gives him the pocket watch back which ends up belonging to his father. They get the drone working and they go to confront Budget Ladrib about the cameras. So the now trio sets out on some kind of mission across the post-apocalyptic wasteland looking for his father. We then cut to motherfucking David Windenstall that has an anti-drone rifle and shoots some sort of pulse laser out to take down the quad. He then strips it of its anal bead and puts a little watch cell battery back in the compartment and shoots the drone back up into the air. I, I like David Winnesaw. I'm glad he's in this film. Holy shit, but it wasn't a watch battery from CVS. It was a goddamn explosive. He's out here stripping the anal beads and blowing these things up. Another third of the budget is spent on this scene where they walk through post-apocalyptic Ohio on their way to this abandoned mall. And of course, no movie would be complete without a super sick planning montage where the characters goof around and Rotor DR1 fucking nails this. I do like this touch of Craig Robinson's cousin on his mom's side. He's actually watching some FPV videos on this monitor. I guess the Type 2 arc pellets don't work too well with the standard converter. This motherfucker put a Type 2 arc pellet in a standard converter. I'm surprised it didn't blow up. David Winnesaw, what about you? Put a type 2 arc pellet in the standard converter. I'm surprised it didn't blow up. Yeah, no shit, right? Well, kinda did. It turns out Kitch's father is the one that created the DR-1, and the military wanted to buy them, but Kitch's father had too many morals to do that. David Winstall was like, fuck that, let's get paid. Kitch's father said, no, I don't want to sell these drones for military applications, which is hilarious because in real life, Chad Capper started Rotor Riot, which he has then sold to Red Cat, and Red Cat makes military drones. David Winstall then pulls some disgusting marshmallows out of his pockets and shares them with the group. They roast them up, and they find out more about Kitch's father and his relationship. After David went and stole his depressing ass story, they flash to the next morning where he's taken off. However, he has left the Morris code key written down for Kitch and, and left him a pair of FPV goggles so he can see out of the camera of Do Dr. DR1. Naya wakes up and looks at him just like everybody's partner looks at them when they're flying FPV. Kitch and Naya end up coming upon this camp and then Dr. Hammond from Jurassic Park comes out and informs them that they have lots of drone racers coming through here and they're more than welcome to come in and eat anything that they want. The old guy from Jurassic Park then informs them that they actually can't have any carrots and lettuce unless they go use this radio thing and look for their parents and give their names or some shit. I don't know, it's kind of fucking weird. And like big dummies, they let themselves get separated and John Hammond fucking rolls the guy and runs his pockets. Apparently Kitch's dad is a big deal. Mitchell Scott, he started the virus or some shit. I wasn't I was doing some dabs. I wasn't really paying attention. But now they find out that his name might be Mitchell and they're fucking pissed. And then Top Gun shows up. 
John Hammond ends up just kicking them out without stealing, or did they steal? I don't know. I also was, I was doing more dabs. But they don't get any fucking carrots or lettuce. Then Top Gun makes a little vlog or something. I don't know who the fuck he's talking to. Naya suggests they take Doctor One to the drone races, because its anal bead has AI in it or something, and it could probably clean up at the drone races. For some reason, the bad guys don't want to go. This seems like a perfect thing bad guys would want to do. Let's go cheat at drone races, right? Inside the drone races, it looks like you can't compete in this event unless you had already competed last week, but conveniently, Kitch's friend Hannah is there and Kanna lets them race. This is exciting. I hope the drone racing part doesn't suck. After looking over the course, Kitch reveals that he doesn't think DR1 is going to be able to learn the course fast enough to fly using its AI, so the bad guys are going to go get him a controller so he can do it manually. Fuck yeah. Oh, the dude was vlogging because it was a messenger drone. That's actually pretty clever. I like that. So it looks like he's going to enter the drone race and pilot the drone manually and then let the AI take over after that. I don't know. They're going to kill you, bro. This is like, you know, Armageddon and you're going to cheat at a drone race? They're going to fucking shoot him. So the bad guys apparently are putting a super large bet on one of the drones. I wonder I wonder what that means. They're going to freaking sabotage our boy Kit here. Kitch? Kitchen? What's his name? Here we go. This is kind of fucking sick, actually. They got swinging, shut up, you got swinging fucking axes. Bro, this, I like this, I fuck with this. Bro, I would totally do underground freaking stand behind a cage drone races in an abandoned warehouse. This is sick as fuck. Why are these not drone races? Also, I wonder what happened in this timeline where no HD systems work. It looks like everybody's flying analog. So apparently there was an EMP at one point that only affects digital systems. Oh shit, the AI drone won. That's not, the bad guys aren't gonna like that. For some reason in the next scene it's winter, even though in the previous scene it was just fall or something. I don't really know what that was all about. I guess it snowed while they were racing. The dude that was pissed off like, I guess 10 minutes ago or whatever is now their friends. And he was like, yo, thanks for winning me a bunch of money. I want, but he was mad. Wait a second, he won a bunch of money, but he was mad that they won. I don't fucking know. Anyway, he tells him that there's a bus to Pittsburgh. So apparently um, there's like vegetable oil bus that they can take to go to Pittsburgh like a bunch of stinking hippies. There's like some real dramatic going back and forth between the character scene that I don't really understand. Either I'm just kind of high or this movie's hard to follow. I don't know. There's some like bus talk that's honestly kind of boring. I'm sure it's important to this story, but it's kind of boring. So I just, I kind of skipped ahead. Yeah, I'm still skipping and they're still, they're still on the fucking bus. So I'm glad, uh, I don't think of the, oh, it's, Oh, they're singing. They're playing like a ukulele. They're still on the fucking bus. Oh my. Okay, the, the bus broke down if you're following at home. What's happening? The bus... There was a long bus ride. I skipped a lot, but the bus broke down, thank God. There's hippies and shit or something. See, I told you it was hippies on the bus. Uh, I, when I was... The drone set off its EMP, I guess. I was skipping ahead and I missed it, but the drone set off its EMP. So now its battery's almost dead. Oh, there's conflict. There's a second conflict in the film. The drone's almost dead because its anal bead is dying. They gotta go. They gotta get going. Oh, the guy that fucking hated him with the Heart of Gold game is... Uh, what? What is this guy's deal? He fucking comes in really hot, but then he's a big teddy bear. I don't I understand that. The fastest character arc of the film so far, that guy. So the DR1 drone starts leading them down the path. I'm assuming towards the doctor. Kitch picks up himself a big stick to defend himself. But then it ends up Dr. One it just doesn't like sticks. Again, these Bando sets. Like, was this just in a fucking shit... 2015? Is Ohio this rough in 2015? We switched scenes to Fallout with Drib making fucking soup noises. Thanks for including soup noise. I wanna know, I wanna, I wanna see your sound guy. Getting them fucking soup noises. Kitch finds a video of his father injecting him with, I guess, is a vaccine or some shit to the virus. I don't understand how power works in this world either. Like, everything just has power. It's kinda sick. He runs outside and him and the DR1 have a little bit of a fallen out. I will say though, Christian Capri here, damn fine act. This is 2015, so I don't you know how old he is. He was like under 18 when he was editing the Rotor Riot shit when I was fucking with them back then. So I don't know what, 16, 17, 15 here? Fantastic job, man. Fantastic job. This whole movie actually has been a pleasure to watch. Like, it can't be little stuff, you know, but this isn't bad at all. Next scene, we got the bad guys again talking about how they use the AI drone to rig the race and win the money, and the kid took off after that. So I guess they're gonna go look for him. It looks like there's about 15, 20 minutes left in the movie. So yeah, I, I bet we're gonna get to like the climax now. The costumes and the set designing are good too. I was look. Hey, what the fuck was that? Oh, oh, it's chocolate. Is it? A few minutes later, Fentanyl the Drib comes up and tries to take Naya back, but her and what's his name, Kipper? Kipper ain't having that shit. This motherfucker pulls a gun on him and shit, shoots it off, like, there's that little drone there. Here comes the drone. He don't like sticks. What the fuck you think he's gonna think of a gun, dog? 
He pulls his gun out, and I was like, all right, fine, I'll go. Don't fucking shoot us or step on his old drone anymore. I'll go, I'll go. She's like, we didn't get this far for nothing, so just go. Go find your dad. I'll get in the truck. I'll go back with this creepy fucking Ladrib looking fool. Oh, he's going to run it over, isn't he? He's going to run that shit over. Hell no. Hell no. Bro, run, little drone. Run. Run. Oh, he EMP'd you, bitch. He fucking EMP'd you, son. Hell yeah. Good, good for you. Good for you, little drone. You fucked up now. You fuck. Oh, he's pissed. Kipper. Kipper is pissed. Look at him. Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to hump your leg to death. He's going to hump the shit out of your leg until you don't like it a lot. Get him. Get that leg. Give it, Kipper. Oh. Oh. Oh, shit got real. Yeah, no shit he shot him. He was humping his fucking leg to death. Why did he make him shoot him? That's what I'm saying. Oh, it was in the... Oh, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Bro, get the doctor drone. Oh, yeah, okay. Good job. I wonder if it's going to be okay. Oh, where did they get these guns? Where did they get these guns for this shit? They just go, yo, let me call my fucking neighbor. You got any AKs? They're like, yep. This is the first time that gun's ever seen sunshine. Oh, shit. Kipper died. Man down. We got man down. Holy shit. Is that his dad? His dad's there. Go give him. Go give him a hug. Movie over. I can go fucking back to dabs. God damn it. God damn it. What was that? Satan? So Kipper has some flashbacks and shit and wakes up and realizes that he's actually in a pretty modern hospital and his fucking dad is there. And the first thing he asks him for is his fucking drone. Like, there's your, there, win. Game over. You saw your dad. What's up? Oh, God. I hope there's not some, like, profound moral dilemma or something in this. I don't have to pay attention. God damn it. So I'm lost again. I don't know who... Everybody, everybody's a bad guy. I think everybody's a bad guy is the part that I'm missing. Everybody, except Kipper, I like him. Everybody else is a fucking bad guy. Oh, thank God. They still do have cargo pants in the future, though. I also like how in budget sci-fi movies, you just wear a sweater and they're like, there, it's, you're, you're the lower cast in the future. Dirty sweater. Clean sweater. You're one of the fucking rich people. All right, so at this point in the movie, they're outside talking and there's probably some important dialogue going on, but I'm like, I'm just going to go and skip it a little bit more. I can't really be bothered. To... Okay, they go inside. There's like a baby or something. Okay, so they can, they got babies, they're making babies. There's some important stuff, I think, that happens now. Oh, shit! They sent out a placebo instead of the fucking thing. It was in his blood the whole time. What did the drone have to, what did the drone have to do with it, though? The drone is his dad. Wait, it's crazy. So far, this movie's pretty good. I just hope it doesn't end with some kind of, like, cop-out bullshit montage ending over music. But is anything in life normal? Ah, oh, god fucking damn it. Wait a second, is that the guy that gets naked on Eric Andre's show? Just wanna say I love you, son. Alright, let's wrap this thing up. Oh, it works again, they fixed it, they got their little buddy back, there we go. I think the drone is the dad. Yeah, I think that's what's going on is the drone is actually the dad, and his blood makes more drones. What? 